Do you ever want to get a bunch of garbage together, melt it, stick it in a syringe, and then plunge it into your veins in hopes that it will melt away all the garbage that's resting on your shoulders? Well, I feel that way sometimes, but then I get the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, and I don't have to get a bunch of garbage. It's time once again. Um, I'm a little upset today. I, I feel like there's not a lot of time left before um, either Little Red or Flesh, both very compelling characters that I really enjoy uh, interacting with, are gone. I feel like I just had to say goodbye to Kaz and Cat. I haven't really even had time to get through that before I'm going to have to say goodbye once again. Luckily, I live in the world in which I live, in which there are so many beautiful distractions that, uh, that help make life a lot uh, better, maybe even too good. For instance, after I get done playing here, having fun with the real game people, real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament, I get to get on my bike, go through the rain, which will at first be a little uncomfortable, but then it will become pleasurable uh, to game day, and I'll get to play games there. And I'm even bringing a game along to play solitaire in case everyone just wants to play Power Grid. So, win, win, win all the time. So much winning, sometimes it feels like losing. Here we go. So it just may be a turn of desperation for our two danger boys, Little Red and Flesh. Uh, if this progress marker gets there, which it could possibly this turn, um, or at least that was what they believed when they picked their chits, um, one of them is going to be eliminated. So it's a turn where they want to score as much as possible so that they're not eliminated because who wants to be eliminated? We have to assume everyone wants to do well in the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament. We have to assume that everyone wants to get to the special gaming event and win. Um, turns out no one picked Trade Progress. Uh, don't know why. That's just how it ended up. And so their desperation was maybe not necessary, but they're still, they're still making a play for it because who knows? Maybe next turn, it could be the same situation. So they want to, they want to get ahead. No one wants to be this close to the the precipice. Everyone wants to um, be secure. They want to be secure in where they are in this this wild, crazy world in which they and we live. Um, so we've gone through production, we've gone through trade progress, not a lot of action there. We did see um, Melky is trying to buff up uh, the British Isles because he figures Little Red's going to be coming for him with his Saxons and he's right. I mean it's public knowledge that the Saxons are their really only choice, their early hope of scoring is on Britain. They're not going to take a majority of, of Europe. Um, I mean that's just they're not even going to get second place right now. We've got these two huge empires. And then, you know, the the Finns to contend with a lot of European powers that uh, are going to be wider spread than the Saxons. So he had to, he's trying to, as quick as he can, to bolster himself. Doesn't have very strong units. He's way far back in the progress track. Um, probably should do some trading with him, but he's been kind of scrambling just to get up an infrastructure so that he can take an attack from the Saxons. Looks like this is going to be the turn. Uh, though we have to start maneuver with the Arabs, which is an interesting choice. Um, they're not going to have much to do. I think they're just making a grab for Mesopotamia. Um, probably leave those guys there. I don't know. I think he's going to send the horses up right there. And that's that's going to be the extent of their maneuvering. Unless he has some card. No, I don't think he does. Nope. Nothing there. Wanted to grab Mesopotamia while he could. He It was left open. So then we're going to go to the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were going to probably do the same thing. So we're going to see some struggle here between Melky and Cowboy. I did actually something... I'm kind of discovering, rediscovering what they chose. I'm doing something to kind of try and uh, make things go quicker so I can get through the videos quicker. I actually did the, so the, the um, decision making last night before I went to bed. And so, because that actually is most of the time I spend playing the game is choosing the chits. And then going through and doing the playthrough actually doesn't take that long. So hopefully I can get filming done a little quicker using this method. So let's go to Cowboys Maneuvering for the Phoenicians. I'm going to have to put down the camera for that because there's a bit more than just moving a horse a couple of areas in the Mesopotamia here with all of these Phoenicians um, in these piles. 
Cowboys using a barrage card, which is kind of similar to the charge card he used last time. You'd think always that archers would choose to barrage if they could, but apparently they can't always choose to do that. Usually, I, I guess maybe they can just see it. They can just shoot arrows one at a time. I don't know. Um, it's one of those cases where here's a tactic that seems like a very common tactic but you can only use it in special circumstances. Maybe it's to be interpreted to mean like it's a really good barrage or something. I don't know. But what that does is that's going to double the missile attack there. So that's going to give them 10 plus 4 is 14 um, against Melky's 2. But Melky's going to have uh, going to be able to subtract three, or no, four from Cowboy's attack because he has the Prophet Muhammad there and then he also has a fort. So that's going to be subtract four. That's going to be interesting because here we see, um, you know, a very vast superiority in numbers, right? We have 14 to two. That's a seven to one. So I guess we're going to have to use this four to one column. But then we're going to get a minus four to it. So you know, one person has an advantage on the column and the other one has an advantage on the row. Here we go. Let's do the big roll. Five. That's good for Cowboy. Five. Normally he would win, but one, two, three, four. So he's going to lose half of his units, but get rid of all of, uh, all of Melky's gentlemen here. Um... So that's that's not too bad for Cowboy, but you know it it is it is I guess he lost out about as much as as Melky there. Um, yeah, there we go. So I have to decide what to do with Muhammad. I think there's going to be a good chance that he gets shot. Uh, he's going to have to make a stealth roll because of the barrage. He's going to really have to dodge here. Um, stealth against. Let's say green. Well, no. Let's let's use his card. So he's got a, a that that there would make it red. So it'd be blue. Blue. The barrage will make it worse. So he's going green against blue here. Uh, six. He needs to get better than six. Higher than six. And he got six. So he squeaked. He got shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put four damage on him because it was a squeak and not a total hit. And there we go. Giraffe's turned to maneuver, and she's doing two interesting things. First thing she's doing is she's sending two of her leaders, both Spartacus and uh, Ivy Main here. Um, she's having both of them go after, um, what's that guy's name? Yori Blackpad. So we're going to have a two-on-one -on -one tactical battle, which is going to be exciting. All right, so she's going to be doing that in the boot of Italy. Um, and then the other kind of more interesting thing to me is she moved her boat out of the North Sea. Now what that's going to do is open up a path for Little Red to get to Britain. Now why would she do that? Well two reasons. One, her nearest point competitor is Melky there. So if he, if Little Red does well against Melky, that's good for her, right? Because that's going to hurt him, you know, secure her spot as the number two player, the contender for the lead. And also, um, yeah, there we go. Then on the other side, that's going to help Little Red. And if Little Red can beat Flush out here, then Flush is no longer going to be a contender in in India. So it's kind of a it's kind of a clever ploy on her side, um, or at least it's a it's a it's a move that's aware of the the multiplayer dynamic and not just thinking about it in terms of a a number of two player games. So by helping Little Red, she's going to be harming Flush. And, you know, if she can get these guys out of there, that's going to be a huge, huge headache off of her head. Okay, so this is the most metropolitan of the ancient uh, platters. I chose this one because it's Rome, right? And Rome is a metropolis uh, of the ancient world. This doesn't really show that, but I guess they're fighting on the outskirts of town or something. Um, interesting fight. So it's two on one. We have Ivy Main and Spartacus on one side. Um, Spartacus is a is a really decent melee fighter. Ivy Main, I haven't actually read her text yet, but she, I think she has some like special attacks she can do to people. Um, I'll have to read up on that. Yori Blackpad, not the best fighter. 
uh, he's good in tunnels, so if he can get to this tunnel, that's good for him. He also has some cards, which is good. That's a that's an advantage that Runt is going to have over Giraffe's forces. On the other hand, if they win, they get those cards, so that's going to be nice. But I think the main reason she's doing it is to get Giraffe's guy out of her capital because um, he was hurting her. Oh, I think he was maybe supposed to be dismissed after that. Oh, well. We've mo we're moving ahead. So let's go ahead and... Um, Roll him in. We'll start with Ivy Main here. He's got a five. So let's take a look. There's a five there. He's got to go there. Or she's got to go there. Sorry. Uh, Spartacus. Four. He's got to go da, da, one of those two places. Or by his friend. Hmm. Probably that would be better. And then Yori Black Pad. Hopefully a two or a six. Got a two. That's nice because it's right by the tunnels. So I think we're going to see the fight in the tunnels. Let's see what he can do. His, he can move better in the tunnels, and it's harder for people to hit him in the tunnels. He's a he's like a goblin. All right. So I guess I can just start moving him. Uh, defender will go first. Probably should have rolled in first, but oh well. One, two, three, six. And then he can go under seven. He's down there. All right, so this is definitely going to take place in the tunnels. Could get away, I think, if he goes to that side. I think that that was the rule we established last time. Haven't done a lot of these. Go ahead and move Spartacus. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the wood ivy main here. I better read what she does. She's got some stuff, especially with these woods. All right, so her powers aren't as useful as you maybe would want them to be. Um, she is good in the woods. It's hard. It's kind of similar to how Yori Blackpad is in the tunnels. It's hard for people to hit her, and she can move better in the woods. Um, her special charm ability, though, isn't really going to affect him. He is, he's too smart for that. If he were any dumber, uh, see his wits there are yellow. If they were, if he were any dumber, he wouldn't be able to attack her at all. But it might be useful because she could. Um, Maybe block him off from leaving by going there. But anyway, it'll be nice because she can get there faster. One, two, three, four. Um, I guess she wants to go this way. Five, six. And then she can't go into the building because that's going to be sad. So I guess she'll go seven. They'll be together. And what does he want to do? Does he want to go towards them or not? Hmm. I'm going to play a little bit and then I'll come back so you don't have to sit here. So Yori was going to wait. That makes them doubtful about wanting to come in from this direction because if they do, um, he can likely shoot them. You don't know what cards he has. All right, so I think she's going to send this person this way, Ivy Main. By she, I mean Giraffe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then she'll be stuck there. I think Spartacus, hmm. Spartacus, how good is his shooting? Spartacus could probably dodge something. One, two, three. She doesn't want to. Draft doesn't want to send both of her people that way because otherwise, Yori Blackpad can just make a break for it. One, one, two. Oh, he's already there. One, two, three, four. Probably wait till next turn to attack because he won't be able to get there. And so if he's going to risk getting shot, he might as well be able to attack afterwards. All right, so Yuri Black Pad is going to stay. No. I'm going to move right there. I can still have opportunity fire on Ivy Main. And I think they're just going to go in. One, two, three. They're just going to rush in. Four, five, pile on. One, two, and it's just going to be a brawl in the tunnels here. Um, yep. Okay, so now everything will be revealed and we're going to do a melee combat. We just know they're all in that space. So Yuri Black Bay Pad is going to reveal this Gurkha Kurkri knife. Gurkha Kurkri knife. And then um, they are going to reveal nothing because they don't have any weapons. Let's do them first. See, he's going to try to attack Spartacus is probably wiser, right? So we got green against green. Hmm. Yeah. So straight up seven or better to hit. And that's a seven. That's going to damage. Blue against blue. 
And that's that's a squeak, so that's what damage minus two. So that's gonna do one damage to Spartacus. And we'll, oh, we gotta get a die, don't we? Should be more prepared. I'm doing. <clears throat> All right, so that's one damage to Spartacus. So Spartacus is at four. All right, and then Spartacus can fight back, which of course he would. Um, and that's white against green in this case. I don't know if that's a hit or not. That's a bad roll, but is it a hit? He's so good. Did he miss with that? White against green. Yeah, he missed, that's too bad. And then Ivy Main has red, which is really bad. Red against green. And she got a five, that might actually work. Red against green, that's a five, so it's inverted. Yellow against blue, that's probably a, She's got to amaze to do anything. And she did. Yellow against blue, that's definitely an amaze. And then amaze is damage plus one. So she's done one damage to Black Pad there. So he's at three. Whew, very interesting. Black Pad's going to run away, I think. Um, one, two. Well, these are half, so that's one. And then two, I guess. Three. Four, five, six. I guess he's there. And then these guys have got to move. I guess Spartacus will go straight up the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why was he able to move so much further? I don't know what I did. Oh, maybe just because of all these buildings. Um, she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess like that. And then he'll go one, two, three. I think he's going to get out. One, two, three. Oh, he's on the surface. Four, five, six. He's free. All right. A little bit of action there. That was fun. I enjoyed that. So Cowboy should have been okay. Re what I messed up was I forgot about the science advantages he got. Um, so I went ahead and put the unit back. That's just what happened. We're having a big invasion now though. Um, little Red Saxons are invading Britain. Now if he, w what I would have done in his case is I would have just sat some boats in the North Sea and got an extra point on that because it's going to take a while for him to get the majority probably before you get to this point. Um, here so but he's going full in he's going with the full-on invasion I don't know if he'll be able to hold on to it um, so let's work it out we got and one thing I've been forgetting to do is draw these cards for combat I don't I don't think I'm going to do it you know since we're using the combat result table we have a randomizer there I don't know that we need double randomizers so I'm not gonna draw cards um, you're supposed to draw these cards and add that to the strength points but um, I could not, I've never been clear on sea invasion. There's a, there's something for the Irish here about ignoring the invasion modifier, but I don't know what the invasion modifier is. So if you look at, at, um, this rule book, I'm really filming sloppy today. I'm letting you see all the moving parts. If you look at this rule book here, um, here, here are the modifiers. I don't see an invasion modifier. Do you? Am I missing something? Where is this invasion modifier? And I looked at the part with the boats. And it doesn't, maybe I just can't read it because it's so boring. But uh, anyway, we're not going to worry about it. The boats, let's say the boats don't get to be involved. What do you think? Should the boats, the boats get to use their their secondary stat because they can shoot from the shore. How about that? So we have six plus one is seven against five, but they're going to have a minus one to the die roll because oh, are those those are woods straight up die roll. So it's seven to what did we say? Seven to four. We'll say that's a two to one. Close enough. Two to one there. And let's just do the roll. This, this, yeah, because he would get plus one. And do they have any other things? Ships, blah, blah, blah. Nope. That's it. Two to one. 
ba 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 ba. Three. That's a very neutral roll. Two to one. So he loses. Ha the Saxons lose half their units, and England is now a Saxon place. All right. Now it's Flesh's shot to try and get some points with his Marians Guptas. Um, so if we take a look at India here, we have one, two, three, four. Deserts don't count. Five. Um, areas controlled by giraffe. She did not move the Harappans this turn. They chose to civilize instead. And we have three currently held by flesh. He can take Maharashtra very simply by putting one in there. That means he has to take one more from her in order to have the majority and be able to score an extra point for owning India. So that's what it's going to look like. He's going to take Maharashtra and then figure out which I guess of these three to go after. It's probably going to be one of these two, right? Because you don't want to have to fight an elephant. <sighs> Flush actually considered trying to hit the elephant, uh, partially because he could choose which units would go against it, and he could choose the ones that weren't weak to elephants, namely um, like these swordsmen. Uh, the elephants are, are bad if you're on horseback. But if you're not on horseback, not such a, well, they're still, you know, they're still strong. Um, but instead he went up against here, partially because he doesn't want to be right adjacent to uh, Little Red right now. Um, he'd much rather keep Giraffe in between. Uh, so he went up the middle, avoiding this river. If you cross a river, that's even harder. So he's at a 3 to 2 with a minus 1 on his die roll. Um, yeah, right, so... Not the greatest chances, but he's probably going to take the territory. It's just uh, he's going to be kind of vulnerable to counterattack. One. Oh, shoot. Flush. NN. That means nothing. No loss. So they can decide whether or not to retreat. Do they want to retreat? Does anyone want to retreat? I don't think so. I think they're going to keep it going. Oh, I should see if anyone has a... The Harappans, I think, have a... Yeah, if she has any cards she wants to play, she can. I should check that. Sorry. New Dynasty, Goldmine, Bad Augury, Time Wrinkle. Nope, nothing. No combat advantage there. Oh, but she does have a science advantage. I'm forgetting that. Uh, so she's, yeah, that's going to be a minus four. Shoot. Three to two minus four. I'm not going to re-roll the first one because it's the same. Four minus four is zero. All the... Which is, yeah, all the attackers are eliminated. I think I made that a little strong, that science advantage. Um, just feels a little powerful to me. Maybe you could only have a net one for science advantage. Let's say that. Um, effective immediately. So, but we also have to do the age advantage. I'm sorry, if you're confused by all this, imagine how I feel. Um, so, where's the purple? Oh, so she's in three. They're both in three, right? No, he's in two. So she's going to have a, uh, another minus one. So she gets to a minus three. Okay, so we'll use this roll and do a minus three. Minus one for the science advantage. Minus one because her mountains more than cancel out the giant on Flush's side. And minus one because she has an age advantage. Um which is a little redundant with the science advantage, but that's okay. All right, so one, three to two, nothing happens. Does Flush want to continue? Yeah, I think he does. Um, five minus three, that's a two. That's a little better for Flush. Still nothing. Does he want to continue? Yes. Does she want to continue? Yeah, I think she does. She's liking her chances here. One. Good thing she did. Three, that's one minus three, we said. That's negative two. So all the attackers, and a fourth of what the attackers lost, uh, Giraffe's going to lose. That's really rough on Flush here. Um, so she just has to lose a unit. I guess this guy's kind of wussy. All right, and then let's see what happens to Thump, the giant. Um... Just kind of beat beat him through a long slog. Do we want to do? I don't know that he can get away. I don't feel like he can. This one we'll make it a stealth roll against whatever her her thing is. That's red. So blue against red. Um, he needs to get an eight or better to escape. 
seven. So he does escape. He's going to have to go back here, though, to get out of there. Ran away. Not a good maneuvering turn for, for Flush, though. He's close to having a majority. He still only needs to get one area. So we're, we're halfway through the civilized phase. A little more and a half. I still have Runt and Flush to do. Um, so what happened? The, fin, the Finns, they got their capital in Finland created. Um, they're able to have towns now. They're no longer a barbarian people because they're in Era 2. That's what that symbol means. In Era 1, they're barbarian. Um, barbarianism mainly uh, deals with production and how production works. So they're, they're going to produce more from the lands they have, but they also have to pay for their people. Used to be they didn't have to, so it's easier to kind of, like if you're the Saxons or the Finns, to just kind of build up in one space because um, you don't have to hold more territory to support your people. Um, but now they do, and so they're going to have to expand out soon. They also created a pope. They made a pope in Ireland. Ireland is now the pope. That gave Milky a point, which is nice. Um, what did Giraffe do? Giraffe's Harappans did something, I forget. They updated their metropolis. They might have... I really can't remember what they did. I don't think they did anything else, really. They just kind of updated. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of distracted right now. Little Red, his chams. He created a flood in this river here, which hurt Flush a little bit more than Giraffe, but disordered them all, and then also just improved himself. He was really hoping to get more, either more artifacts so that he could score some more points, or some more destructive things to use against Flush, but he, in the Destiny phase, he didn't draw those cards. So next time, we're going to be going over to Runt. She she actually, she's using her wild card to do Civilized. She's going to take a point penalty. Points are something she has in abundance, and she wants both of them to be able to Civilize this turn and I'll, I'll go into why that is next time when I get back. So it turned out that on my way there my bike had a flat so I came home and my nice lovely wife she rescued me and uh, brought me. I had a nice time uh, she brought me to the store. I had a nice time I didn't get a bike on the trail, which is too bad. Another nice thing about that that I might not have mentioned last time is that there is a um, there's a trail through the woods that goes all the way to the store, which is also a winner for me. Um, what did I play? I bet you're wondering. I played Search for Poseidon's Gold, which was a treat. Um, I haven't gotten to play that in a multiplayer situation, so that was nice to introduce it to some people and they enjoyed it. I also played uh, Princess twice in two different occasions. Got to introduce three different people to the game Princess. And I also played Alhambra, which was like... Um, I can see why people enjoy it. I just... I don't know. It, I, it was a fine time, but it wasn't like... I didn't feel super engaged in the game. And then what else did I play? Zendo! Great game, but now it's time to get back to 7x7 Seven Seven Ages and do Run Civilize action because I know you're all been waiting for that for several hours while I was away at game day. And Runt has just done her double Civilize action. One reason she did it is because she had glory points to burn. Another is she just wanted to be able to civilize with both people. She had some artifacts she wanted to play on her Egyptians who score off artifacts. And her Amazonians were able to get the first knights in the game. They're in the knight space here um, with a K-N, not an N-I. Um, and so that allowed her to upgrade all of her chariot people into knights there. And lo, this was this was a fun little surprise. She got Sir Gawain as her leader that she drew. So that was nice. Um, as the Egyptians, she jumped on the giraffe wagon and slamming down Melky to help out Little Red. She played some storms here, got rid of his ships. That is going to make him tied for a um, number of areas with Melky in Britain. So... Let's see, this turn, Melky's going to win the tie because he has, um, it's his turn right now, and so it's closer to the start of the turn. Uh, next turn, though, it'll be Cowboy's turn to start. If, if they both maintain the same number of areas there, then, which really, if, if Little Red decides to move, he can get the majority, I think. Well, no, no, he can't. But anyway, next turn, if, um, 
Little Red will have the majority. So he's going to score one this turn off of off of Britain, and next turn he'll be able to score two, thanks to the help of Runt and Giraffe. And Flesh ended off the turn um, with a civilized action against Giraffe. He got rid of all of her currency. She found a gold mine during her civilized action, but she lost all the money she got from the gold mine due to her currency crisis. He probably would have hit someone else with that if it would have done something. He also tried to foment an uprising in um, the Cham's Southeast Asia there, but that was unsuccessful. So, did get to some improvements on on his his cities, but that's about it. Hoping He was hoping to get some artifacts or something to, to give himself some points, but that was not the case. Let's tally up points and then we'll take a look at our glory track and that will do the turn. And the round ends with both um, Flesh and Little Red tied for last place. Cowboy's still, still doing well, pulling in six. Melky, I don't know, his Arabs did not have as good of a start as they as he would have liked. They're a pretty potent empire if you can get them going, but he rushed right into Cowboy, and because I have that, um, that cultural rule, they maybe weren't ready to take him. Um, that's something to consider in the game that I'm not used to considering, because normally, you know, if you started the Arabs here, you'd be able to sweep out and take out um, those Phoenicians easily. That was not the case here. Uh, Melky also getting picked on over here just because he's um, competing with Little Red, and also because, you know, he's a, he's a third place for in the game. And so Runt and Giraffe, if they get a shot, why not? Plus Flush, he's a danger to both of them, less so to Runt, but he is infringing on Africa, which Runt would like to have to herself. Um, with her Egyptians there. Though they really only get one point off of it, it's still a solid point. Runs pulling an 11 now. She's done rather well in this ancient labyrinth. Remember, how, how this works is if you have the, the lead in the labyrinth, however many places you have in the lead, you get that many points. So she's pulling in two a turn right now. And then at the end of the ancient period, which is when someone gets to here, I guess, um, we're gonna take all of those off there and then they're going to score that many points. So Runt right now would pull in one, two, three, three points, and so on. Oh no, four points. All right. Um, how else is everyone else doing? So Flesh pulled in more than Little Red that turn. He got four. Little Red got three. Um, let's see. Will Flush continue to do so? A lot's going to depend on India for him. If he loses India, he's he's in big trouble because it looks like I don't know. It's still up in the air. I mean. Flush has got to keep scoring in India. Little Red's got to score more in Britain. He's got to be able to take in more or at least hold what he has. It's going to be tough for either of them. Uh, Little Red also has the, the money route with the Chams. Does Flush have any other chances? I don't think so. The ser Well, one thing Flush has that Little Red doesn't is he can start another empire. His Mauryan Guptas are blue. He still has a brown. And I happen to know he's got something in his sleeve here, another new empire to start. So that could make a big difference. Uh, we'll see if it's enough of a difference. It seems like there are some forces arrayed against him. We'll have to find out next time. Uh, depending on how long this is, I might just keep going into the next turn. I'm, I'm thinking about in terms of length of video. I know I did a lot of yapping. Um, not a lot of cutting, so probably this, probably I should say next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitary Mega Tournament, Pope Leg 7x7 Ages.